What's up? So. Hopefully the lighting's good. Again, I'm not really, I don't have a light on or anything, so I don't know. Hopefully the sun maybe comes out while I'm doing the video. But anyways, as you can tell by the title, this video is what is the bridge of Ra? Now, it's interesting because a lot of people, they don't really ask. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think a lot of people are even questioning why the channel is that name, right? Now, me, I, <laughs> I'm Rashuna. The Bridge of Ra, the whole, it's something. It's something, it's, it's like a platform, you could say. Now, I was going to do this video as just like a one minute short, but like I said in the last video, when you give out, when you start giving out your metaphors and your parables, your you know your bars, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, people just want to run with that shit. You know what I mean? Like art is definitely something that's not really respected. You know, um, creativity, all these type of things are things that are not really respected. So there's a lot of ways you can look at this. Um, even Pac, right? Pac said there's ten rules to the game. I'll only give you two. He's talking kind of about the same thing I'm talking about here. So I'll go back into that. In a, well, first of all, you only gave two because of the same reason I just told you about. Because you got to keep your jewels to yourself. You know, you got to keep the treasures within the chest. But I'll actually go back into that in a minute. But now there's a lot of different cultures that describe this bridge. Um... I'm not really going to go through them too much, but you can find it in the Celtic with the Bifrost. It's not exactly the same thing, but you can find it in Mand Mandianism, Zoroastrianism, um, in the Bible, in the Kemetic spiritual system, if you want to call it the spiritual system of Ma'at or um, I don't know what, what, whatever you want to call the spiritual system in Kemet is you can find it in Kabbalah you can find it in Sufism you can find it in uh, Hinduism you can find it in the Native American spiritual systems you can find it in Ifa you can find it in every single spiritual system now I'm not going to go ahead and explain any of those because I'm not really a part of any of those spiritual systems. So I'm not really going to go ahead and explain that. But if you've seen my profile picture, which I'll pull up a better image of it. If you guys don't know, you can just right click on people's profile picture and click open in, like on your computer, open a new tab and you can look at people's profile pictures. You can just zoom in on it, you know, click control. What is it like shift or control the, the plus sign or whatever and it'll zoom in, right? So, um, it might be bad quality, but you know, you can see people's profile pictures if you don't know that on YouTube. So, actually, I gotta see if you guys can even see this. Wow, this thing, just, this thing never focuses on this picture for whatever reason. Anyways, on my Instagram, I'll, I'll put a picture on my Instagram so you can actually see it in proper quality. Now see on the bottom in the waters it says bridge you can see on the step here it says raw now I could probably talk about this picture the symbol for like I don't know for a long time but man this is kind of a weird position to talk about it from but anyways this is one representation of it all right so like I said, there's a difference between me and the bridge itself. But when I came up with the name, that was going off. Of, that was tied to my government name. So um, kind of another way of writing my government name in a sense. But it's kind of more than that. So there's a reason why, for example, uh, they carry the Ark of the Covenant. 
And then the priesthood, through the bloodline of Aaron, continued to keep the ark, right? So, this ark has caused a lot of problems in the world. A lot of people, a lot of different groups around the world have been trying to find this ark. They've been trying to find certain, certain items that exist in the ark, whether it's the, uh, the, the Holy Grail or the, the cup, whatever you want to call it. Um, I guess the Ten Commandments are in there too, so it's kind of funny. But the, um, the Ten Rules, the Ten Laws, the Ten, whatever you want to call them. The, uh, the staff slash the sword. And yeah, there's a few things in that arc. Now, to put it in a simple term for people who, I don't know, for mouth breathers, I guess I'll call it. <laughs> For people with uh, very, I don't know, with short breath, <laughs> let's put it like that. The Bridge of Roth is a a bridge. It has nothing to do with, even if I have the name of that Roth and the Step Pyramid. I'm not even talking about Kemet, really. So people need to un need to understand that. So it's a bridge. As you can see in the photo, that connects you through the mind to the source. Basically what a priest is, a person who connects the people to the spiritual. And then there's a pathway through that. That pathway is very different when it comes to everybody who sees it. So if we want to talk about this on the fourth dimensional level, because it's a pathway that goes through dimensions, it goes through a bunch of stuff. So it's kind of it's kind of hard to talk about it in just a very singular sense, but on a fourth dimensional level, everyone is going to see it differently. One person might see it as like a, like a tightrope as thin as a needle. Another person might see it as a, like a whole open, like a open road or even like the size of like a football field. It might be a wide pathway. You know what I mean? Um, People might see it as just open air. Um, people might think of it as just floating. There's a lot of different ways that people will see this pathway. Now, the way this works is you come in through the womb and then you leave in the tomb, right? Now, that tomb would be more so the heart. The heart has to be lighter than the feather. At least as light as a feather, but lighter. Lighter. <laughs> now, if it is lighter, then you become light to the point where you can leap, aka rapture. So, when I talk about fasting a lot, right, people think it's just like starving. That is not what it is. See, there's a reason why people will talk talk shit about Christ, talk shit about Jesus, talk shit, you know, and let's not get offended by the word Jesus now. Like, if you want me to say Yashua, Yashua, whatever, whatever. Either way, people will be offended by Messiah figures, Christ, all these different, um, well, not offended, sorry, they'll talk, they'll talk down upon these different group people, right? Whether or not they're real or not. When I first heard about, like, spiritual information in the way that people are presenting it online and stuff like that my first thought was okay well if these people aren't real then you should be at least able to do what they're describing at least because even christ says you can do what i can do and more so the only people who are talking down on these figures are the people who 
basically it's just like haters you know what i'm saying it's like a poor person always like it's always poor people hating on rich people you don't really see rich people hating on rich people you don't really see poor people hating on other poor people for being poor like it's it's more like <laughs> people who lack that people who are empty they will hate on people who are full now If you're supposed to be able to do all that and even more. Christ specifically talked about the breath. He was a yoga master. I'll put it like that. And yoga, and if you guys think you know what yoga is, because you see you see white people or white women with like damn near skin tight clothing and like you know, like spandex and shit like that whatever that you know what I'm saying like the the yoga pants even though these are like loose pants is more real yoga pants like if you just look at regular like Ethiopian pants or regular um look look at an actual guru they don't wear skin tight clothing that's not real yoga pants yoga pants are loose and they allow you to breathe if you think it's some white girl with a Starbucks coffee or a booster juice with skin tight clothing trying to make their body a certain type of way so they could be more sexual and all that type of shit and then all, all the other type of stuff and that's not what yoga is the word yoga if you really just look it up before people just get hysterical and start <laughs> saying dumb shit about um yoga and meditation and stuff like that yoga isn't also just twisting yourself into like a pretzel and all this type of stuff it's not about mudras it's not about the shapes shapes you form and all this type of stuff it's about the word just means yoke it comes from the word yoke it just means union, meaning union between your physical and your spirit. That's all it means. This is how you, this is how you really attain God body. It's not about, and it's not, if people think yoga is the flipping yourself into like a pretzel form, that's not, that's, that's half the yoga. That's just the body movements and stuff like that. People don't really understand what yoga is at all. There's so many different types of forms of yoga. Tantra isn't really about sexual it's not about the sexual part of it the dark tantra side gets into that a little bit but it's not even about that at all like people don't understand what it is the fact that you breathe you're doing yoga the fact that you breathe <laughs> the fact that you can think you're meditating otherwise you would just be the same as you just be on some animal type of shit which you would still be meditating, but just be on a different form. Like, <laughs> you have a lot of junk inside of you, and when you meditate or whatever, you, you, you start to face that, you take your consciousness into that realm, meaning you face the type of junk that you're taking in. This is why, before you do really anything, the whole thing about being plant-based, getting away from technology, getting away from all like all like all the bullshit from the matrix and just kind of getting in connection with nature and all that type of stuff this is why you do all that because when you come into communion with your spirit you're connected with nature the things that were created by the creator so you're in tune with the creator and you communicate through your mind with your soul that's how it works like people people right now is um we're getting into zombie season. We're getting into zombie season. And people who are just hating on whatever, they're they're on zombie mode. And every time you knock them down, they're just going to get back up. There's a reason why you have to shoot zombies in a pineal gland to get them out. Because they're being controlled. If you're hating on individual people out here, whether it's individual people, government organizations, affiliated organizations with the government <laughs> whatever group that you're hating on outside of yourself i don't know if you've missed the last 20 <laughs> five videos i've just been <laughs> 25 to almost every video i've done on this channel but it's really about facing yourself now yoga 
just mean to come in communion with you, like just to become one with your spirit, to become one with yourself. That's all it means. Now, if you don't understand that, and you think, and your image of it is becoming some kind of guru, um, and having your head wrapped too, you gotta understand, Israelites, all, they all wrap their, Kemet, like all, you know how many people wrap their hair, man? Anyways, if you think it has something to do with, if you think it's just evil, that means it's something to do with yourself. Like the people who right now who are gonna come out on zombie mode, just hating on everything outside of themselves, they have the darkest stuff within them and they have not worked on that at all. See, when I'm talking about, actually, before I even get into that, when I talk about meditation, yoga, and breathing, what does Christ tell you to do all the time? Just to breathe. <laughs> really, that's really all, all you got to do to make it through this. Is just breathe through it. Just breathe. If you don't understand that, then you're completely missing the point. When it comes to understanding yourself, again, when you get to that level where you think, for example, yoga is kombucha or kombucha, kombucha whatever, how you pronounce that shit, then coconut water, smoothies, Starbucks, tight pants, twisting yourself into a pretzel, whatever, all that type of stuff, that's the commercialized form of yoga from people who during like the you know the hippie movements and all those movements who went to india and all that type of stuff met with a guru came back and then commercialized it and sold it to everybody else that's not what it is they're just that's just a marketing scheme that has nothing to do with what it actually is now the christ energy has to do with the serpent energy if you don't like that then i mean that's on you the word serpent in hebrew is literally the same as the word for soul for shining soul so what does that mean if you have a spine if you have a brain you have serpent energy if you're some kind of being that existed before humans and you don't have a regular invertebrate and all that type of stuff maybe maybe you maybe yeah maybe you're not maybe you're not part of the rest of everybody else here so maybe that type of thing could be evil for you or something but still even all those beings even without invertebrates all that type of stuff they still have that energy the fact that you have sperm <laughs> as a guy, the fact that you were created from a man and a woman, does it not look like a serpent? Like, does every single thing, your fingers, your hair, all this type of stuff, does it not, your legs, does it not all look like a fractal version of a serpent? This doesn't mean serpents are good and like now you, you gotta work. See, people are so stuck in religious programming, they think anytime someone mentions like nature, oh, now the sun, serpents, people think that because they're religious they think they have to worship it that's not what it is like people need to get out of the understanding like when you eat a meal do you worship the meal no you just use it and you move on it's not really you you know you got to know how to utilize the energy when aaron was able to throw a staff down and turn into a serpent or a tanning if you want to say it's a crocodile some people say it's a jackal whatever the than the hosh or whatever when he threw down his staff it turned into a serpent ate all the others what was that <laughs> why did they go in the desert for 40 years see people will try to be like egypt was evil egypt was evil and you don't even know what egypt was or what landmass they're talking about what group of people they're talking about at all in that time period they weren't even really talking about Kemet like that What, how did they survive in the 40 years with the manna when they were surviving off manna? How did they do that? How did Christ go 40 days without food or water in the wilderness and come out shining?
they starving in the desert? Or I mean, in the wilderness, were they starving in the desert? See, people will say Egypt was evil. Egypt was evil. Mm, no, not necessarily. Like, see, what was happening is like kind of like what's happening right now. We're saying that something is happening to society. Something is happening to the world, right? Well, their society, but anyway, something's happening to the world, or the yeah, the world, right? The world is different different than the actual earth you're standing on. It doesn't mean the earth is going to get destroyed. It means the the world you're living in is going to get. See, when you understand that, they weren't saying that we're some divine beings, and you guys are evil. So, Egypt is going to fall, and we're going to survive because we're the chosen ones. No, it was because. And every single time Sodom and Gomorrah, Babylon falling, Rome falling, um, Eden falling, um, the, the angels falling, <laughs> every single one of these, and I've said it like a trillion times, I, I can't even say this anymore. The judgment was happening to everybody. The difference was the group of people who made the decisions, who made the right decisions, in the past and continue to make those correct decisions in the future is what caused a separation between what was evil and what was good it wasn't like these people are evil and these people are good it was about the decisions that each group were making that meant based off of the decisions that anybody made people can flip to whatever side if you notice how with pharaoh they're like supposedly right they're like let my people go, uh, blah, like supposedly, right? Like I'm just kind of going off of what people know from the imagery of movies and all that kind of stuff. Let my people go. Oh, um, basically they kept telling them you had a choice to worship the true God versus idols. And I'm just using Egypt as an example. So people don't get too tied up and this could have been every single thing. The prophets did this with, um, even with the Judean kings. Because there was a bunch of Judean kings who went back and did bullshit and all that type of stuff. It was talking about people had a choice about what they were going to do. And it wasn't like a choice where, see, it wasn't something where it went over their heads. It got to the point where everybody understood what was happening. And then it was about who determined, who, after they had informed consent of full sound mind body, it was about who made the right decision then. So it's not like something where the people are talking in a code and you're not understanding it. And uh, just because you didn't understand this symbol, it's, it's not that. It's once you really understand truly and you neglect the choice or you neglect the, the right choice, then that's what it is. And that's talking about you start to neglect your own soul. Because the Creator put a piece of Himself into each of all, all of us. Regardless of if you're at the top, if you were created before man, mankind, like the, regardless of whatever level you're on. Because just as humans can fall, angels can fall too. So it doesn't even matter whatever level you're on. It doesn't matter. And I also don't want to hear people who are not as melodated and stuff like that. I also don't want them to just start running around and saying, Race doesn't matter. That's not for you to say at all. That is not for you to say. All that's going to do is spark up deep-seated traumas in different people and stuff like that. So it's not for you to say this. That will just be proving to your... Like, so everyone has their own test. Everyone has their own judgment that they're going through. Separate from what's happening in society. This is why true chosen people will be in the middle of all the chaos and they won't even have a hair on their head touched wherever you are in the world because if you notice the chosen people are scattered across the entire world it says that so you might have to physically make a move to a certain area and wherever you want to feel comfortable to you know be safe but at the end of the day everyone's not going to go to one location like that's not what's going to happen either because everybody's scattered across the entire planet like that's not going to tell you this africa is going to be cool i'm gonna tell you that africa is going to be fine you see it in the movie 2012 you see, they put in all the symbology africa will be fine um i mean south america is probably going to be fine too to be 
for the most part. But it's, I don't know, there's a lot of wicked shit happening there too. So there's wicked stuff happening everywhere. There's wicked stuff happening everywhere. Um, but anyway, there will be safe places on every single continent. Europe, um, but <laughs> there will be safe places on a lot of different places. Uh, safe, safe spots on a lot of different places around the world. So, but the thing is, it's more so the people themselves will make it a safe zone rather than, um, but if you're in a place that's purely wicked and you're being told to leave, you need to go, like, just trust your own instincts, trust, trust your own soul and stuff like that. So that's, that's one thing, but, so don't neglect your own soul, but, and communicate and communication with that. Now, when I'm talking about fasting and people think, oh, that just means you're going to starve. No, that's not at all what it means. See, if you don't know what you're doing, then just don't do it yet. But once you really learn how to breathe, you really don't need food at all. Like, it really, you really don't. And it doesn't even matter what location you're at, to be honest. Like, I'm in a cold, at, well, it's not cold right now, but I'm in a cold environment. And I can supersede that. And I have. So... But if you're in a, but preferably don't stay in cold environments. <laughs> so that's that's another level of that. It's preferable. It's a more preferable not to. But anyways, yeah, everybody will have their judgment. Every single per, every single group. Now, when I said there's ten rules to the game, I'll show you what you two. Rule one: get your cash up. MLB money for bitches because they breed envy. Rule two. Um, wash your homies, um, you know, all that, right? Because it's talking about what I'm talking about right now. You're born alone, you die alone, you know what I mean? Well, what, you can say with the creator too, but it's still, you're, bo you're born alone, you die alone, right? When you go through that bridge, you have to do it alone. And if you start looking left, you start looking right, you start looking backwards, definitely don't look backwards, but if you start looking left, you start looking right, you're going to lose your path. It's not, it's not, it's not a game right now. See, we talked about the first horseman disease and all that type of stuff coming. People said, because everybody was comfortable and they're like, oh, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. And they couldn't see the spiritual signs. Now, you know, what happened happened and people are caught up in the middle of that shit. And then we're telling people, don't take the dab, don't take the dab. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's fine. And then people are still doing it. Tell people war season's coming. And I've been saying this since three, at least like online on my channel, at least since three years ago. And if you see comments and stuff, because I make comments year, but even before that. But anyway, and I told people in real life before, obviously, then. But anyways, war was going to come. War was going to come. Now war is basically starting to happen and people are like they, I don't know I think they want to be in the middle of some kind of war situation for example in America or a th first world country they want it to be war right there for them to believe there's war even though it's happening everywhere else so people don't believe that until the sky you know people don't believe chicken little till the sky actually falls on them anyways then we're saying death season and famine season for some reason, people believe about famine because they can't let go of food. Everyone preps about food hella quick. But death season, <laughs> people are like, oh, no, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. People don't even see it coming until they're in the middle of it. You know, people don't believe it's famine season until they're starving. See, with this whole death season, the whole Judas and Christ thing, you're really going to see who's the Judas and who's the Christ here. Like, who, you're going to see the split. And the people... It has nothing to do with being religious. It has nothing to do with being biblical. Like it has the bit the Bible tells you about all of it, but it has nothing to do with what you think it it does. Like it's as simple as are you in control of yourself or is someone else in control of you, basically? Because even in the end times, I bet you Judas ain't, I bet you Judas switched sides. Is the easiest way I can put it. But all the people that were behind him. They all had a choice. So, are 
Are you blaming other people for your life still? Or are you in control of your life? See, and before you get in control of your life, are you happy? Are you... <laughs> I want to say it like this because I, I like triggering people on certain things that they don't understand yet, but are you gay? <laughs> not homosexual. <laughs> not homosexual at all. Nothing to do with that. Gay just means happy. Like, people, you understand what I'm saying here. <laughs> That might be too much for people. <laughs> but are you happy? Happy? Hmm, happy. Happy is the god of the Nile River. And then a lot of these gay spiritualists, or homosexual spiritualists, will try to say happy was a homosexual god. And he was a hermaphrodite and all that other type of stuff. It's a damn river, first of all. We're talking about a river. We're talking about the Nile River. It's a river. We're not talking about it being male or female, first of all. So, anyways, in the Ethiopian side of things, the first letter, see, you always have the alpha and the omega. You have the ha and the pe. The ha is the first letter of the alphabet, and the pe is the last letter of the alphabet. Ha, pe. Connecting what they also call a kundalini, if you want to call it that, whatever. A serpent energy basically being in control of your own spine your own nervous system your own electrical system this also lets you have control over yourself so that technology and all the different um, you know information that they're putting into people you can outdo that whether it's nanites whether it's whatever all that other type of stuff RFID all that like RFDs, whatever, but the nanites and all that other extra shit. This is how you override all that type of stuff. It's being in control of your own air and staff. You know what I'm saying? The one that turned into a serpent. Like your own soul. Being in. And the Kundalini is different from the soul, but it, it interfaces with it. So it's. It. it it's like the vessel, it's like the physical aspect. Well, the Kundalini is kind of your spine, your electrical system, all that type of stuff. It's more like the physical uh, interface for your soul and your body. Before your, because your nervous system, all that type of stuff is what controls your physical body. So it's what controls your appearance and controls all that type of stuff. So, anyways, it says my people will die for a lack of knowledge. We know that. When they bit the fruit, it was to gain knowledge. Even in the Bible, Christ is um, referred to as a serpent at some point. Like People need to really look into this stuff and really what it means. And stop being super religious and linear about it, being like, oh, then if it means this, it means this. There's actual physical things that you do with yourself to make that connection. And once you do that, then taking control of your life, having power, all that type of stuff will come. Because once you are able to come to terms with things, like what I was talking about in the last video, the emotional, um, healing the emotional body, right? Once you're able to come to terms with your shadow side and that whole Judas and Christ thing, and you're able to, you know, end that versus aspect and you become one, then what happens is you want to take control of your, like you, you, you want to now start doing the things you, you were supposed to be doing on this planet. Like everybody has a reason for why they're here. A lion does what it does because that's its niche. It's its life purpose. A crow does what it does because that's its life purpose. A fly does what it does because that's its, what it's supposed to be doing. That's why it's in the body. It's in, you have a reason you're in the body you're in and to do what you're supposed to do. There's a difference between a career and a vocation. Like there's your calling from what from inside of you. And then there's things like a career and a job. Now, the reason why fasting and all that other type of stuff is so important is because it lets you have a clear connection between you and yourself. But once you get out of the mud, you don't want to just go back into the mud. You know what I'm saying? Like. Once you get healed from a sickness or disease, 
you might have an immune system to go like if you have a strong immune system but you don't want to clean yourself and then be wearing all white and then all of a sudden I'll jump in the mud wearing all this white you know what I'm saying like the, the clothing won't you, you won't be able to build yourself if you keep doing that over and over and over so that goes into looking left looking right and looking backwards once you make a decision you're going to get tested to see if you're going to go back to your other old ways all this type of stuff to see if you really need a change you need to keep moving forward that fasting all that other type of stuff it comes along with the breathing and stuff because when you learn how to breathe because you can just be breathing and then you could just you know sit down and close your eyes and start breathing and don't know what you're doing that's good but it's about deepening your breath and before you even understand that it's about learning how to make yourself happy from the inside out first and it's hilarious because <laughs> once you learn how to do this it makes all makes all the decisions people made <laughs> like especially with homosexuals <laughs> sorry this is kind of ridiculous to laugh but it's kind of hilarious all the people who are super religious <laughs> all the people who made poor choices sexually all the people who might made poor choices with um committing all these extra crimes and stuff to try to fulfill a bottomless pit that they're never gonna fulfill um all the people who made all these different like poor decisions right um, people who became way too religious, people who became way too scientifical, right? <laughs> Once you realize how simple, and it's free, you don't have to do, you don't have to pay anybody for this, you don't have to buy herbs. See, being plant-based and using herbs and stuff, it helps, but it helps a lot more once you understand what you're doing, because once you realize how simple, all of, what all these spiritual systems and what all these different, once you realize how simple it is, what you need to do to, to, First of all, fulfill yourself. You gotta listen to the words I'm saying. Fulfill yourself. What does breathing do? Think about a tire. When you fill a tire with air, it can hold up something as strong as a car. Like filling your, if you once you learn how to empty yourself and fill yourself up, and truly tap into that happiness, and you don't, it, and there's nothing perverted. There's nothing crazy. It's nothing evil. It's not your not letting spirits into your body. It's not any of that spooky and hysterical shit. <laughs> And you literally can't hide it because it's hilarious. You just like you're, it's you, you're literally actually happy. You know what I'm saying? And it's bliss. Like it's it's the same as people who smoke because I don't think a lot of people realize the thing that when you're smoking, whether it's weed, cigarettes, whatever, <laughs> think about when you they tell you, oh, you have to inhale or it doesn't count, right? You have to take it deep take it deep into your belly <laughs> it's not really the drug that's getting you high like that it's just how you're breathing <laughs> see all the different things that people do to excite themselves and get their breathing up and all that extra stuff whether like i said sex all the other different shit <laughs> it's really like you can really just lie down and breathe and you'll figure you'll figure this all out and once you're happy, then taking control of your life and doing what you need to do will become a trillion times easier. You know what I'm saying? You always want to make things easier for yourself before you do things, you know? And at the same time, this will, once you figure it out too, this is like if you finish a marathon or something. It must feel pretty good to finish. Like, it probably sucks when you're running along that track the whole time. And that track is you making all these crazy decisions <laughs> in your life, you know? But once you cross that finish line then the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end because you know the end of the track is usually the beginning of the track too right the alpha and the omega the ha and the pay it all gets connected and becomes one you know what i'm saying so you go through that galactic center on the well you're ready to go through that galactic center <laughs> you haven't gone through it yet but you've got you're ready to go through it now so once you realize how to connect that and become happy and I don't know perverted shit because I know a lot of people like to twist. <laughs> like, it's pretty funny because sometimes it'd be it'd be it'd be it'd be interesting to let people run with some um, bullshit and just kind of build on their lies and stuff, and then watch a whole tower of lies crumble. So it's kind of interesting to let people just um, think they're super. I don't know. It's just, it's it's interesting, but it's so simple. It's free. It's something everybody can do. It's just, literally you just gotta breathe. 
that's it. And you got to know how to breathe too. That's important. So, um, yeah, it's pretty simple. So what is the bridge of Ra? Well, I pretty much told you at the beginning on a short version, I told you a trillion different ways already. And once you get through that desert, which is basically just the tribulations that you're going through in life, right? And you re got to realize you don't need no savior and no messiah to lead you through that desert, right? This refers to Aaron and Moses dying, you know what I'm saying? Before they reach the promise and all that type of stuff. You got to realize you're the only person who can take you across that finish line. Like, right now, we're going into a whole zombie, like I said, death season. And this is going into the fourth dimension. This is going from the third to the fourth and into the fourth dimension. So, like, now we're kind of in it. And this is where now, when you do things, when you spend your spiritual energy, it's going to feel like you're being drained now. And... What's going to happen is every time people go make videos, every time people get into these, like, I just call them duels, but anytime people get into these verses with other people or verses with different spirits and all that type of stuff, you're going to be feeling like you're drained of energy. And then you may feel unhappy. And now your, your breathing is all messed up when you're unhappy. And, um, yeah, you might feel like you're, you need to go eat more food. You might need to see when people get drained of energy, they're going to, what happens is, for example, let's say you have a thief, right? And let's say he robs someone, he gets like 10K, right? What, what is that thief going to do when he runs out of money again? He's going to go steal some more shit. So what's going to happen is when you get drained of that energy, you got to go back to your source of your energy. And when you go back to, see, a thief might come out and might look like he's doing good and he might make it look like a way to the world, right? But when he's stealing all that type of stuff, his face, he looks completely different. So if you're consistently putting out energy and you have to consistently now be more vampiric in whatever source of energy you're getting that from, right? What's going to happen is that's going to start showing to the world. And if you're not connected to your to the source through your source, <laughs> then what's going to happen is you're just going to keep getting drained and become zombified to an extent. And those people are... going to be lost in the fourth dimension like for example when we were in the 3d right before the shift started happening everyone was super 3d you know what i'm saying it was like <laughs> you tell them something oh that's crazy that's some conspiracy shit that's crazy like everything you know what i'm saying you can say anything you can say you could say man i feel a type of way today man that shit's gay <laughs> like anything that wasn't just literal everybody just discounted it you know what i'm saying and that was because pretty much everybody who's trapped into the third dimension anything fourth dimensional was over their heads right now that we're into the fourth dimension everything that's fifth dimensional is over their heads so if you're not operating from that fifth dimensional state right now you're not going to be um it's going to be basically the same as if, when you're in 3d but it's almost like uh, you're still in the same rat race. Like a new movie comes out, you get excited. There's no new movie out. You don't have any entertainment. So now you need music. Now, if you don't have music, you need some other kind of drama, right? You're in that rat race. Once you're in that 5D energy, and there is a level of that whole peace, love, and light and all that. Well, peace just means it's separate. So not peace in that sense, but love, light, and balance, if you want to call it like that, or I don't even want to really say love, light too much either. Like more like love and balance in a sense. But once you get to that level more so, then you have an oversight over the what's happening in the, the dark realms. You know what I'm saying? So there's a reason why DC movies right now are going to start becoming a lot more big because DC movies are a lot darker. It goes through all the different fourth dimensional aspects of people's psyches, right? And... Marvel is more operates on like a 5D level, if you want to put it like that. Um, Sirius King did a good video on that. But anyways, that's really what it's, that is really what it is though. So you're going to see a lot more DC movies start coming out. 
and if Marvel does come out with some good movies, it's going to be stuff that's talking about multidimensional and different psyches, and you know what I'm saying? Like, so, again, what is the bridge of rock? It can be the connection from 3D to 4D, it can be from 4D to 5D, it can be from any dimension to any dimension, really. So it's the bridge. It can be connection between you and your spirit, your physical and your spirit. It can be connection between your soul and your mind, your mind and your body, your spirit and your soul. It can be connection between you and the people around you. It can be connection with just you and your electromagnetic field or your aura that you create. It could be a connection between you and the internet. It could be a connection with you and nature, a connection with you and any of the artificial environment. It could be a connection between you and damn zombie. It could be a connection with you and, like, I think I said nature, but connection with you and nature, a connection with you and the source. It could be a connection with you and your people, a connection with you and your enemies. It could be, it's really that bridge that just connects things. Really. It's, I have a lot of different ways to describe it, to be honest. Like, so really that connection aspect it could be it could be sexual it could be uh merit marital that's the right word it could be you and your warrior side you and your loving side you know what I'm saying you and your um you being disconnected from your emotion like it could be the disconnection as well so that's really all the that's really what the bridge is and then me is right you know that's a little bit different which i already did two videos on who am i so and creepy enough see you gotta understand when it comes to you and your soul name your extension name all that type of stuff this is not something you just google or something like that this is something you figure you have to literally connect with your soul to learn this name no it's not some spirit that's coming in your body it's not some demon it's coming in your body it's not someone implanting something into you it's not that because you know how you know the difference and if you don't know the difference then i guess you don't know your soul so i mean that's you're saying something for yourself see it gets to a level where this shit doesn't become spooky can you start can you see in the dark like and i don't mean like see in the dark where i mean you can see shapes and stuff like that i mean can you see in the dark And you probably haven't reached that level yet. Do you know yourself? And I don't mean it on a level of... Because knowing yourself is a progressive journey. Knowing yourself isn't as simple as... This is who I am. This is me. Knowing yourself is understanding that it's a progressive... It's a path. It's always a journey. Who you are isn't just... See, it goes deep, but do you know yourself? can't see in the dark yet if you can't well seeing in the dark is another level if you if you don't know yourself if you're not if you're not buzzing yet <laughs> this is the easiest way i'll put it if you're not buzzing yet got that biurnal beat happening without an actual biurnal beat playing like it's just buzzing then you haven't reached that level yet if you are not completely happy being alone and you can respect yourself to also keep people away from you because that shows you that that shows that shows a certain level of maturity that you're not at that level yet. I already said, and I don't want to make this too egotistical or any of that, but that's not really what this is. I already said I'm the first of the first, but the first of the last. And I said I'm closing the gate on a lot of people. And anyone can open the gate themselves and go through, but this is like the type of thing where even if it's a test and you cheat off of me. You're still going to fail the test because you can't cheat off another person in this test you have to no matter how much you know you have to do the work yourself like i could spoon feed people a million pieces of information but again once you really tap into that breath then yeah then you'll reach that level on your own it's really simple so why did he say it's 10 rules to the game that I'll share with you too? Because watch your homies, MOB, because basically he's saying you just got to focus on yourself and you can't give too much to other people. That's why I only shared two rules. But then someone else came after giving you 10 commandments, right? And I'm talking about in hip hop, right? It's almost like 
someone tried to steal the, and it wasn't even the same rules either. It's almost like someone tried to. It's almost like this Judas and Christ thing. I don't know. It's just it's it's a ritual. It's all rituals, and when you see it in the celebrity sense, but yeah, that if you can't understand the stuff you're seeing, if you can't see in the dark, metaphorically and literally. <laughs> So there's a metaphorical aspect and a literal aspect, then you're not there yet. If you're waiting for real zombies to come around biting people and turning people into zombies, and you don't understand the metaphorical concept, and you probably might be on that zombie type of stuff, meaning your electromagnetic energy, your brain dead. And the pineal gland is the seat of the soul. The third eye is the seat of the soul. If you don't, that's biblical too. It's the seat of the soul. And if your soul's not operating from there, meaning controlling your body through, your mind is not controlling your body and your soul is in charge of your mind and it's able to have that electromagnetic field that repels the other things that are trying to control you, then you're probably being controlled in the zombie by. If you're hating on another person and making your whole page about other people, you're zombified. If you're, if you're too focused on other people, You might be looking for some information for yourself, but you're still zombified to an extent. Once you reach that five, like, and I'm just kind of giving it the plain, giving it very plainly. It's not, you don't got to take it too harshly. You got to use it to get your ass in gear, but don't take it too harsh. What I'm trying to get at is, you got to make these changes. And, like, you don't got to do all these other things under the sun. You don't, you don't, like, got to do all this extra shit that people are talking about like sex magic rituals and you don't got to do any of that any of that shit what i'm saying is you just gotta breathe and you gotta learn how to breathe once you learn how to breathe then things like the reason why people do see once you start learning how to breathe and you start unlocking these different like meridians nadis whatever and people are going to try to make it sound evil no that's actual those are scientific but meridians and nadis are completely different than kundalini like kundalini is more metaphysical but like something like a meridian and a nadi those are real those are real like those are real things those are like your nerves and your pa your your pathways in your body so those are real things in your body it's not no spooky stuff once you start learning how to breathe you'll start feeling where things are um where like the cord is basically bent and you'll start moving your body in a way to basically just straighten out the cord and you'll start fixing your posture you'll start fixing your own body just from following that pathway and i did videos like tapping into the seven chakras through the physical i did some videos to kind of explain um that's an active way of basically channeling your energy upwards but then first before you even do that there has to be the passive just allowing the breath to fill your body with, because you're not, when I, when I say you're breathing in color, you're breathing in color, like you're breathing in dark matter, essentially. Like you're breathing in, you're breathing in dark energy and you're able to turn that when you breathe back out, because the whole seven chakras being inside of your body, the breath goes through this and then what happens is you breathe out light. And when you breathe the light out, you create an electromagnetic field around you where now darkness, when it comes into that electromagnetic field, it becomes light so you can see it through the darkness. Like people don't really understand any of this type of stuff at all. And this is the reason why I got to have my lights off and certain things too. And I don't really like, because you just mess with the, watch my recent videos with me talking with the lights on. You just see the light shift every time I move my hands and all that type of stuff. Like uh, it's a lot easier to, um, yeah so anyways if you're if you get caught into a hysteria where you're trying to call this and that evil this and that evil your soul is dying i'm not saying good and evil doesn't exist that's what i'm saying i'm saying your soul is dying the reason why you're doing that is because it's a re it's a mechanism of you're not understanding something so you want to blame something outside of yourself there's some you might be taking information you don't need to be taking in, but 
trust me, judgment is for the most high. It's not for you. And if you put yourself in the position of uh, the person judging, you are going to get judged heavily. And if you get judged heavenly, heaven, well, I guess heavenly too. Um, that's even, that's going to be bad because you probably got a bunch of shit in the closet that you don't want to, that you don't want to expose. And your closet is just your subconscious mind. So you probably got a lot of dirt you don't want to put out there. So, again, I kind of went off on a bunch of tangents, but it's all still explaining the same thing. What is the Bridge of Ra? Connect with yourself and get on the path.